I like it when it's you and me. Good morning, Rangers and Rangerettes. So we're getting this 45,000 pound hazmat taken off. Uh, got here safely, got here at about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, we're pulling off the freight and then we have a, uh, a dropping hook in East uh, Dallas which we've been there before. We just dropped off that load out there in Forney, Texas at the Goodyear plant where I did the drop and hook. And that guy took my parking space and I was trying to find um, a parking spot and everything. So we're going back to that place for that agent and we're pulling a load back down to Laredo for her for about 1300, I think. This one here we're dropping off, paid 1300 coming from Laredo up to Dallas, 1300. And then, uh, uh, 1300 going back down. So each paying right at three bucks a mile. So, so yeah, we've been doing, we've been doing pretty good. And then we got a load picking up in Laredo that's going out to Atlanta next. So let's get this pulled off and uh, we'll get out of here shortly. So today is gonna be a, a really easy day. I need to see if that load we're pulling back down is hazmat. I don't think it is. Um, but it's gonna take a bit because they have to kind of take it off piece by piece uh, because it took them a, uh, a minute to get me offloaded because the product has the vent out. Uh, it's a hazmat load. I think it's the, some kind of substance they use for styrofoam. And so they are, uh, it has the vent out a little bit. And so they're taking their time pulling it off. Y'all yep, see that bump? They just got another one off. But uh, it's about 11.30 right now, and I should hopefully be out of here by noon. We'll be out there in East Dallas at about one. <clears throat> we'll go pull that off. I'm sorry, we'll go drop a hook. Um, and it's only about a seven hour drive going back down to uh, Fort Worth. I think that load is heavy too. Um, do I have it here? Let's see. Actually, some of y'all were asking about my iPad and how I use it for my ELD. So all it is is just Bluetooth. So there's a little device here that connects to the truck, just like your any ELD or any um, any logging device, electronic logging device. It connects to the truck, and my iPad is uh, Bluetooth to that. And so I use my iPad for, uh, for my GPS, which I usually just use Google Maps or uh, Apple. I'm, I know that's not ideal to do, but usually I'm pretty good about trip planning and just looking at the map and figuring out how to get from uh, point A to, to point B. Why are they blowing the horn back there? Trying to get my attention? Okay. Okay, sorry, they got confused on what they were pulling off. It's like, you're pulling off everything. But anyway, so uh, what was I saying? Oh. <clears throat> so I know I'm supposed to use some kind of trucker app for GPS, but I'm usually pretty good about uh, trip planning uh, with the iPad, but uh, it just connects like Bluetooth to the, uh, to the truck, just like any other electronic logging device. And for those of you who don't know what an electronic logging device is, it's a way for the FMCSA, which is the Federal Motor Safety Carrier and Administrative to keep tabs basically the federal government keeping tabs on what we're doing and how we're driving to make sure that we're driving uh, in compliance to the law so uh it used to be done on paper on paper logs but now it is uh done electronically connected to the engine so as soon as we move that truck they, they know about it so that's what that's all about uh what else but yeah, so I did see some of y'all were asking about that. Uh, so I just used my iPad that way. Cause I, I had it on my phone when I was uh, a long time ago. And the reason I don't have it on my phone anymore is because if DOT were to pull me over um, and they confiscate my ELD, they also have my phone. And they can kind of go through your phone and look through previous phone calls and text messages and all that kind of stuff. Why were you doing this and why were you doing that? 
so I have it on my iPad. That way it's completely separate from my phone. And if they confiscate it, I can um, just you know give them the iPad and they just look at my logging device and that's about it. But it's an app, it's just an app that I download called uh, Motive, which used to be called Keep Trucking uh, back in the day. Uh, but that is what I use. So uh, they're still unloading me, it's coming up on noon. <clears throat> So one forklift driver was confused as to what was coming off the truck. And so he put the ramp and the forklift and everything away. And I was like, nah, dude, everything's coming off. And so there's another guy back there who's pulling off the rest of it. So it took a nice, sweet, precious time, but uh, we'll go grab this load and go take another seven hour drive back down to, uh, whatchamacallit, back down to Laredo. I did check it, it's not a hazmat load. It's a load of tires that is going down to uh, I think a Penske, I think, but uh, it's a light load. It's like twenty five thousand pounds from what I saw. Uh, and we have to do the same thing we did last time. Take it to the Laredo terminal. They inspect it, and then we go drop it off at wherever it delivers in Laredo. And then we got to go back to Laredo to the uh, to the terminal, the Landstar terminal, and they should have an empty trailer for me there. And then we'll do our live load pickup Thursday morning. And then we'll go to Houston. We'll do uh, a 10 hour break, a little bit longer than a 10 hour break there. Uh, I wanna get to cleaning these floors. And then uh, we'll leave out Friday afternoon, Friday evening to make our way out to Atlanta. We'll drive all day Saturday. It's a uh, 24 hour facility drop and hook. So we'll get out there Saturday night, drop it off, do a 34 hour break. And now I'm trying to find something coming out of uh, the Atlanta area. And we've done this load before too. This is a Home Depot load that we picked up. A couple of weeks ago, we picked up a load of ladders out there in Laredo, going out to, uh, to uh, Atlanta. And we're doing that same thing. So we're work We've been working with the same three or four or five agents. I can't preach it enough. I've said it before, but getting those agents in your back pocket. So I just looked at the load board earlier. Collectively, there are 80,000 loads on the Landstar load board. And it only makes up about a third of the freight that Landstar has. The other two thirds are not posted on the load board because they have dead, the agents and dispatchers and brokers, they have dedicated drivers they give those loads to, or the drivers know who to call to get certain loads. So 80,000 loads on the board, and it only makes up about a third of what they have. And so like these loads that we've been running, uh, they haven't been posted on the board. Well, they, they been posted on the board, but before they posted it, or when they posted it, they reached out to me simultaneously saying, hey, we have this load, do you want it? And I reached out to them saying, yeah. So the load we brought out here that we're dropping off now is a dedicated lane like two or three times a week. And then the load that we're taking back down, uh, they have these going everywhere, but it's somewhat of a dedicated lane going back down there. Uh, but the her stuff is usually dedicated. Picks up from the Goodyear plant, goes to um, Laredo, goes across the border, then they come back across the border and they get dispersed. So the product we picked up in Beaumont at the Goodyear plant, I guess they make the tires down in, in Mexico. And then when the tires are done, it comes back up to the States and that's where we take them where it needs to go. That's what I'm thinking. So but anyway, enough talking. Uh, let's see if they're done and we'll get on out of here. Alrighty, we're out of here. Since we're doing a drop and hook. Uh, I need to get my, uh, my strap out of here. guys it's been brutal the past couple of days <sighs> 
Looks like we got here just in time. There's a bunch of trucks here. Lined up to get in. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait in that line. Anyway, we put this stuff up. Let's get out of here. We're here, got my uh, trailer number that I'm picking up and what spot it's in. So we're gonna drop this trailer here and go grab the next one. It's windy as heck out here, guys. But I did wanna say thank y'all for all the comments yesterday. I did read through them. Um, just keep us in your prayers, that's all I gotta say. I mean, there's obstacles every single day. There's uh, some people who try to um, sabotage what's going on. But when God is in the way uh, of everything, then I mean, they gotta go. They got no place here. But when the blessing falls into your lap, I mean, you only thank God for it. So once again, y'all shout out, y'all say thank you Miles down there in the uh, in the comment section. He's the one we uh, got the truck from. He's the one that reached out to me last year and said, hey, I see you're in a bad spot. Uh, you know, here's what I got, you know, let me know what you think. And so, like I said, I had slept on it at first, but it was just a bad deal altogether with, uh, Keeping that long start. This is a way better deal here. So, anyway, we'll get more into that later. Let's go grab this trailer. A bit later in the day I've been on the phone talking to my uh, I guess you can consider him now my mentor or words of wisdom you know who you are and so uh, been talking for about I guess, two hours or so an hour and a half and so we're about to get on the road it's almost three o'clock got about ten hours of driving on my on my shift I think it's about a seven hour drive back down to Laredo. So we have to go to the, the terminal, get this thing inspected. We'll drop it off at the customer 
and then uh, we should have an empty trailer waiting for us back at the terminal. Uh, they already sent me a trailer number, so we'll see. I've been screwed over a few times by agents. Oh yeah, we have an empty trailer. You get down there and ain't nothing down there. So we're going down to the terminal. And then I've seen a, a, at the TA in Lancaster, South Dallas. Uh, it's showing with our Landstar discount. It's showing that it's uh, 220 a gallon for fuel. And so I am for sure gonna go check that out. Hopefully it's accurate. 220 a gallon for fuel, guys. So let's pray that's the case, because if it is, we're gonna go fuel all the way up. This load is only about 22,000 pounds. Uh, 28,000 pounds. And we're just taking it. 462 miles down the road. Can't beat it. 1300 bucks. And then uh, tomorrow we'll go home. And like I said, we'll get some more things situated with the truck. So, anyway, let's get to this guard shack and uh, get to rolling. ahead and got some fuel hoping that the receipt says otherwise because on the app it does not show that pump price but we'll get the receipt there's a bunch of trucks up here but usually this ta right here in south dallas is usually good uh, y'all probably saw on the time lapse there's a crap ton of uh land star trucks up here so we'll see i'm gonna get the receipt and see what the uh what we're looking like so I got a receipt here. It's showing the pump price is $3.45 a gallon. But according to the Landstar app, it shows that it's $2.50 something a gallon. And then with the discount that it's $2.20 a gallon. But it shows that I got a rebate of $70 back on the fuel. Because with Landstar, we pay full price at the pump and then we're rebated the savings back on our fuel card. And so if I did the math at 220 a gallon at, at how many gallons did I get? 140 gallons. What is that? So 
somewhere in that ballpark. And it might it might be right because it's what's the 220 a gallon? What's the difference between 120 a gallon or 220 a gallon and 349? That's about a dollar and 29 cents a gallon. That times 140 gallons. Yeah, it's, it's about right. So I don't know what's going on. But it's, it's still off a little bit. But I don't know. But I, either way, I went ahead and got fuel. We set, we've been here, let me see. We've been here about almost an hour waiting to get fuel and everything. So <clears throat> 45 minutes. So let's get on out of here. Let's put some miles behind us. So, uh.
you got to find your own.
turn here. paperwork and we'll be on our way it is a little after 12 30 in the morning I'm so tempted to sleep to pull over right now and call it a night these are back oh appreciate that thank you Guard gave me a bag of potato chips. He's a pretty cool dude. Easy process. Like I was saying, I was gonna go ahead and call the night now, but I'm gonna go drop it off now because I don't know if you guys have seen in previous videos seen the Laredo traffic. next to the uh, the border check well the actual border whoa now brakes
careful with these lights because they are notorious for catching you and having to slam on your brakes. Let me go.
to that gate said exit only. Find the entrance. Check in. Well guys, we were unsuccessful. With delivering this load. Tire has some, uh, but well, there's several tires that have some like a, a like some chunks taken out of them. And so they won't accept the trailer. to do is park outside the facility and try it again tomorrow morning with the next guard and on the shift and see if they'll accept it.
go back there and take a look. <laughs> that whole ordeal, guys, took two freaking hours, man. Two hours. I pulled into the facility and a guard waved me on through because there's multiple businesses in there. There's Penske, there's GM, there's Ford, there's different companies. And so they waved me on through thinking I was there for Ford, got back there to the Ford, waited in line. He waved me through, went back there. He was like, no, you gotta go back to the front, that's for GM. Came back around, had to wait in line again. And then it was just a whole ordeal. It took two hours of standing there for, just for him to tell me, oh no, we're not gonna accept it. So anyway, let's take a look at these tires. So, I mean, I saw this when I grabbed the trailer, but I didn't think it was a big deal. So you can't really see it on this side. Actually, it's probably on the bottom, which is why I didn't really see it. As it is now. But on this other side, I did notice it on this side when I got the trailer. I wish it was like this when, when he looked at it. Let's see. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, that parked like this. He wouldn't even seen it. Oh, yeah, actually, yes, he would have. Like, you see right there? Right there. And right there. So they would not accept it. Which sucks, because I need this. I need to get this over with so I can get on my Atlanta run. So... Sucks, guys. So I'm gonna email the agent. So by the time she gets in the office tomorrow morning, she'll see it and and know what's up. But I'm just gonna try it on a different ship and see if they'll pass it. Cause the wires aren't showing. And then Landstar, when I took it over there, they passed it. He did, you know, bring that to my attention, and he's like, "But there's no wires. It's not on the sidewall." And it was like different criteria he gave me he said so you know it's fine but nope not over here he said nope we ain't taking it two hours later uh, so i was hoping to get a full night's sleep but it ain't gonna happen so uh we're gonna park right outside the gate along with these other trucks and then uh we'll creep on in there in the morning and see what they say so yeah guys and i did go back and i looked over that uh did the math on that whole uh, fuel situation at the TA and it was off. It was way off. So it, it was like a difference of, so at the pump, it was 349 at the pump, 220. So it was like a dollar and 39 cents times about 140 gallons. I think I came up with something like I should have got about $180 back of my rebate. But instead I got 70. So I got screwed over for about 110 bucks. And the fuel was actually, so when I did the math, I tried to figure out what the fuel actually was. Instead of it being 220 a gallon with the discount, like it said in the app, it was actually about $3 a gallon. So it was 345. It was brought down at three bucks, which is not a bad discount, but the pilot across the street was 287. And so I did that math to find out how much I missed out on. If I would have went to the pilot and uh, it was about 15, 16, $17, something like that. No, it was $14. That's what it was. $14 difference. So had I went to the pilot, I could have saved 14 bucks, but had the thing been accurate, I could have saved 180 bucks in today's fill up. But also, had I known that, I wouldn't have filled up both tanks. So, so yeah, we got screwed over. I don't know if that's Landstar's fault in the app or if that's TA's fault. But somebody put in there that it was a $2.20 a gallon. That was with the IFTA, showing what the IFTA savings was. Without the IFTA, it was like two forty a gallon, which is still excellent. So, yeah, I don't know who dropped the ball somewhere, but I knew something was weird when I pulled up to the pump and it showed three forty five. 
but in the app it showed it was like three right at three bucks i think something like that or 260 or 28 some something i did see the discrepancy but i should have paid more attention and trusted my gut and plus i didn't feel like waiting in line all over again because we waited there 45 minutes in line to get fuel because there was a bunch of other landstar trucks there too and so yeah yeah so today has not been has not been too good so but anyway guys thank you all for watching uh find out tomorrow what happens with this trailer because I have until about 3 p.m., I believe, tomorrow to get my, uh, to get an empty trailer and then go get loaded to head out to Atlanta. So, anyway, guys, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, hopefully it gets better tomorrow so we can go home, get to cleaning these floors pretty good, and uh, head on out to Atlanta. But make sure y'all subscribe. Thank you all for who have subscribed. And, uh... I'll catch y'all on the next one.